let's make our world look a lot better. You'll see that I have kind of zoomed out so I can see my terrain better. I'm actually going to hide these other objects that we've made recently just to get them out of the way while I think about textures. We're going to learn more, as if you're a graphics designer, about texture creation in the future, potentially. But for all the rest of us, and for now, we want to learn just how to get these textures up and running in a, the quickest way possible. So by clicking back on the terrain, going under our terrain component, we have this drop down menu under raise or lower terrain. There's a paint texture option that looks pretty familiar. It has different brush types. It has brush size and opacity, but we actually don't have any terrain samples to work with yet. So let's head over to the asset store. And what I did in the asset store is just look for texture. And I went to free and I found this terrain texture that looked cool. I actually pre downloaded it and pre imported this. You didn't have to wait. So I went through the whole process, download and import. And I see it down here, Terrain Texture Pack Free. And in it, I have terrain textures. Now, there's some interesting file types here. I see that I have this Grass UV01 and then this Grass UV01N. This is called the normal, and it's a bit of a weird looking image. What this is responsible for is determining the actual texture that lighting will interact with. This is kind of the art that we see but this is the information for the lighting to know how the light scatters so it looks a lot more realistic. So how are we gonna put this on? Well, back on the terrain, under a paint texture menu, I'm gonna go edit terrain layers and create a layer. It's going to actually look in my project assets and show me all the assets I have to choose from. And it should, I should see just the textures in here. And with this selected, I'm just gonna double click and it's going to create a layer. Notice how it applied it to the entire thing. The entire world. The first layer that we create is always going to be doing that. And from here, I can just paint other layers on top of it. But before I do that, I want to see something here, which is that notice that I see these rectangles. I can see the individual. Um, actually, I want to get this brush size way smaller so it stops being in my way. I can see the repeated art. So there's like this one little square that made the art, and now it's repeated over and over and over again. This does not look very good. It is texture, but it's not the right size for my world. So I need to do a little bit of manipulation for the tiling. And I can actually go to my tiling settings and change the sizes. What is 20 going to do? And X and Y. Well, it's going to make these squares a little bit bigger, but I can kind of still get a sense of those, that squarishness. From here. See, I see the tiles are still there. So what if I just made it way stretched out so that I actually have this grass way more zoomed in and luckily this is a high quality texture so we can and now suddenly we see maybe a little bit of a cut on the flat ground here but this is already a major improvement to not noticing that repeated application of the texture so the resize is going to be an, a, a super important part of this here however we want to see the lighting looking a little bit better with this let's see if we can actually see this in action here the normal map i'm going to select the normal for that grass and it's gonna actually have to bake in the lighting for a little while, but I should eventually see that there's a bit of a difference in the depth and the detail that I'm seeing on this texture because the lighting is now interacting a little bit more intelligently. Might be a little bit hard to see on my screen here, but you can test this out for yourself and make a judgment call. All right, I want to actually edit my layers and add another layer. Oh, we don't have a pre-made layer. We need to create another new one. I'm gonna make a on um, this ground one here. And with it selected, I'm going to immediately add its normal to it. And now is where we can use our brush. So let's go down to our brush size, make this a little bit bigger, make the opacity a little bit stronger, and now go to where it's hilly. And I want this now, when I click and drag across, take on this texture of metallicness. Uh, this. It looks a bit like a, a mineral of some kind. And this texture is quite shiny, quite metallic, it's, it's showing the uh, differences quite clearly. I've kind of gone a little bit sloppy on the edge there, but hey, we can deal with that for now. And I see the repetitive rectangliness. I'm gonna get the brush size out of the way. And so let's do the same thing. I think the last one we did 200 by 200 for this world size. And already you can see that it looks quite a bit more like some kind of a metallic texture. And I do have some other settings like metallicness and smoothness. If I, if I take this metallicness up, it darkens it a little bit, which you can play around with quite shiny from the normal settings. And 
You can play around with some of these other settings just to see kind of how they work here, but what we have now enabled is the ability to make some different terrain textures. I'm just going to show the swapping between them really fast here. Let's say, oh, I definitely overdid it, painting too much on the ground. I'm going to go back to my other layer with a nice small brush size, and I'm just going to smooth this out and just clean it up a little bit so it's only the grass goes right up to the edge. And maybe I want to add some other like plants and stuff along the edge to kind of disguise this transition. When you're working with Mr. Chu graphic design students, you might develop some better strategies for making this look nicer. Right now, we're getting some basic textures in place so that our world looks a lot nicer. And now, if I go back to the top, I have this, oh, wrong one. I can kind of finish off the texture up on the top here. Cool. Turn my ramp back on, turn my sphere back on, and let's see what it looks like in the live game. Oh, so beautiful. So it looks a little bit finicky, but we're just getting things up and running here, and it's going to be up to you to customize and define all of these things in much more refined ways to come. Now you know how to paint textures.